All right, so today we have uh, another comparison, and the comparison today will be between the Leica uh, Barnack Leicas, which are represented by this camera and this camera, and we have here in the centre, taking the centre ground, we have the Zorki One. So. What can we say? Uh, well, the Zorki One is a direct copy of this camera, the Leica II. Um, and its history is quite interesting. Um, Russian camera manufacture began in the early 1930s with Fed, uh, which was again a direct copy of the Leica II, and there is a video. Uh, I've made a video comparing an early Fed to the Leica 3A that we have here. Um, so camera production began in the early 30s. During the war the production facilities were damaged and bombed out. Uh, and so production resumed in, I think I'm correct in saying, around about 1948. Um, only this time there was a new player in the Russian camera industry, and that was Zorki. Uh, originally, it was called the Zorki Fed. Uh, let's turn it around so you can have a look at the engraving on the top cover. This one's an export model. It dates from about 1953. Um, and so it has the Cyrillic uh, title and the Latin title also. Um, so yeah, so, so Zorki began in 1943 making copies of the Fed, which was itself a copy of the Leica II. Uh, and so the Zorki itself is uh, a direct, exact copy of the Leica II. Uh, it's interesting to note that by the time this camera was made, um, the Russian camera industry was no longer in breach of uh, patents owned by Leica because the patents to make the Barnack Leicas, this camera and this camera here, they were put into the public domain after the uh, hostilities ended. And so this camera is not a, a rip-off or a fake, but a legitimate Leica copy. So what can we say about it? Well, I've mentioned the engraving. Uh, if you can see the comparison here, I'll show you them together. Again the Leica scores because of the fineness of its finish. It's absolutely beautifully finished. The engraving here uh, is nice but you can feel the edges and it's just a little rougher. Uh, here on the Leica it looks it's so sharp and fine that it looks printed uh, but in fact it's not. It's engraved. One thing you will notice uh, the on the top plate where the Leica has uh, a, a dip or a recess for the viewfinder window, the Feds and the Zorkis don't. You'll see that the top plate goes clear across and is actually moulded into the viewfinder window like so. So here's the viewfinder window and there is the uh, Part going straight across the top plate. The top plate is level. Well, now on the Leicas, you can see uh, very clearly that it's it's not level. There's actually a, a, a small recess there. So that's one important difference, uh, aesthetic difference, between the Leicas and the Russian uh, copies. See also on the Leica two that's repeated. So it has a just a little dip there for the um, viewfinder window. It doesn't go straight across uh, as in the Zorki cameras. The early Barnack Leicas, which both of these are, and by early I mean before the 3C, so before about 1942 or thereabouts, whenever the 3C was introduced. Um, the early Barnack Leicas are uh, certainly the top and bottom plate, as you can see here on this old 2 that's had all the 
most of the paint taken off it, you can see that it's actually made of a sheet of brass uh, moulded and fitted uh, to size. So this is simply sheet brass. And it's the same on the chromed camera, except you can't see it because of the chrome. This camera is appears to be die cast. I can't see that that is a stamped part. It looks very much like a die cast part. Um, so you could argue that the, um, the actual structural integrity of the Zorki is is actually slightly better than the than the early Barnax because they use the this uh, sheet brass construction instead of a die cast construction. Um, the size, well, I think you can see by comparison here, top decks are dead level, the winder knob is dead level, as for width, width, oops, if I can show you here, as for width, the width is absolutely identical, no difference at all in width or height. Weight is different, the Zorki is lighter. The Zorki is definitely lighter, certainly lighter than the three and lighter than the two uh, that I've got here. Um, <clears throat> the shutter buttons are slightly different. You can see that this Zorki has a, a little hole in the shutter button for a cable release, whereas the early Barnax have this uh, single button here, solid button with no uh, no hollow, no recess. Um, and I think the idea was that you take off this uh, little collar around here. Uh, these can often get lost, so I won't take it off. I think there was an attachment to fit on over there on that thread. Uh, an earlier form of cable release. So size is exactly the same. Construction is probably a little bit different. Let's see how it compares to the two. Yeah, size for size identical to the like a two. Height again identical. So let's fire the shutters off and see how they sound. This too probably does need a bit of a, a clean lube and adjust. It's, uh, it's rather old. Now it's getting on for a hundred years old and it, it, it may never have been CLA'd. This camera has lived quite a life. Um, it's got matte black paint on it and somebody scraped the paint off. It's got a couple of little dings and dents, but it is in perfect working order. And the body covering is perfect. So we'll wind up the Zorki. A little more resistance from the Zorki. Of course, when you're dealing with cameras this old, um, it's very difficult to tell which of them have been cleaned, lubed and adjusted. Uh, and which haven't. Let me make sure I set them all to the same speed. So I'll set them all on 1 60th. Yeah, so as I say, it's very difficult to tell when cameras are this old, um, when they were last cleaned, lubed and adjusted. I think that this three has been um, serviced within the last five years. It's, it's very, very smooth and nice in operation. The two I don't think has been serviced in some time uh, and probably could do with a little work, although it, it is in good working order, it does work fine. The Zorki, I think, again is in need of some uh, attention. But let's fire them all at 1 60th and you'll hear the difference uh, in, uh, in sound. Uh, as I operate the shutter. So here's the two. So it goes with a fair old clack, the two. Here's the Zorki. Oh, 
that's not too bad. A little, little, uh, sounds like something's loose actually, it feel, feels almost like something's loose. And here's the like a three quietest of the lot. So I think this must have been uh, serviced fairly recently. Uh, but the Zorki is pretty nice. Let's, let's fire it again. And we'll see that it does have a very nice, smooth, quiet shutter sound. It's by no means um, agricultural or harsh in operation. It's a very nice um, camera to use when it's in good order. The lens on these cameras, this one has the Indostar 50, so it does need a bit of lubrication this one. Uh, but the Indostar 50 is a very, very sharp lens. Um, the, the Indostar lenses, by and large, are not uh, Elmar copies. They look like an Elmar, they work like an Elmar, but they are not Elmar copies. Um, the, the internal arrangement of the optical parts is different. However, the differences are only subtle. The Indostar 50 and the Indostar 22 that are on here, both of those are Tessar designs. Um, well, now the Elmar lens itself was a Tessar design as far as I understand it. You may know differently if you do, please let me know. But as far as I understand it, the Elmar was a Tessar design. Uh, and so these are not too different to the Elmar. Um, choice of lens, 22 or 50, Indostar 22 or 50, I much prefer the 50 because it's sharper uh, and just seems that bit nicer uh, a lens. There is a third lens that you will see on these uh, FSU, former Soviet Union cameras, uh, and that is the Fed 10. Well now the Fed 10 is a small collapsible lens, uncoated. It was the first lens that was used on the Fed cameras. I suspect the Fed 10 may be much closer in design to the original like an Elmar design. Why? Because in the early days of the Soviet camera industry they simply copied like a design certainly for the body um, and so I think it's likely that they did the same for the lens. So if you get an early Fed 10 lens it may well be uh, much closer in design to the Elmar. Some even go so far as to say that it's an Elmar copy, and uh, that may indeed be the case. However, the 22 here and the 50, the Indostar 22 and the, and the Indostar 50 are not Elmar copies, even though they're very similar. Um, the finish on the Zorki is somewhat less nice than the Leica finish. Uh, I don't know if you can see on the uh, on these edges here, these sloping edges. Um, there are parts where you can still see the machining marks on there, or the stamping marks, or whatever it is that's been used to form them. They've been polished, but they've not been polished out completely. Uh, and it's little details like that that give away the game, if you like. Um, the Zorkis and the Feds are not as nicely finished as their Leica counterparts, they're, they're simply not. However, if you are looking for a Barnack Leica and you don't perhaps want to spend too much money, then the Russian copies are pretty much an identical experience. Um, there are subtle differences. For example, the Zorkis and Feds have no strap lugs. You'll notice on the three here there are strap lugs. Um, some people aren't too bothered about that. Personally, I think strap lugs are a very useful addition because I don't want to risk dropping my camera. The Leica 2 
that this camera is copied from, you'll see, has no strap lugs. Also, there are no slow speeds on any of the Zorki or Fed models, uh, apart from a very, very rare um, version that was made in order to, um, as a sort of a dry run, a test run for the Zorki 3 models that came after it. They are very, very, very rare indeed and, and will probably be at least as expensive, if not more so, than uh, a genuine Leica. So there's not really, unless you're particularly interested, there's not really any point in, uh, in acquiring one of those because they are expensive. Other differences? Well, no slow speeds on the Zorkies. Is that really such a handicap? Well, in fact, it isn't. In day-to-day in -day shooting, you'll find that you, or certainly I find, that I almost never use these old cameras in low-light conditions or conditions requiring a long shutter speed. And if you do want a long shutter speed, well, it's actually really easy to turn the dial to Z which is still reproduced on the Russian cameras. As a Z, it's actually German uh, for time. The word Zeit is German for time. It's still reproduced on here. If you want a longer shutter speed, simply do it that way. That was about one second. That was about half a second. So film has a lot of latitude, a lot of forgiveness. Film will film will forgive a multitude of sins uh, and so there's no uh, terrible urgency to uh, to actually have a, uh, a slower speed mechanism on these cameras. Um, are those the only differences? They are pretty much the only differences that you will find. Uh, that's the case with the 2 of course, the Leica 2 has no slow speeds, it, it, it simply has a, a, a sight time setting. Um, so really it, it, it's, as I said with uh, the Fed comparison, the Leicas are better cameras, they're nicer made, they're nicer finished. However, when you consider that you can buy a Zorki one for 40 to 50 pounds with a lens, uh, whereas you're looking at, I don't know, three to 400 pounds for like a 3A or a 3 or a 2 with a lens, with a Leica lens, you know, these cameras are, what can I say, several times the price, almost 10 times the price of the Zorki copy. Are they ten times better? No, I really don't think they are. So if you want some rangefinder fun with a good simple Barnack style camera, which is an identical, pretty much identical copy to the Leica 2, the original camera from where all rangefinders and all 35mm photography sprang, then get yourself a Zorki, get yourself a Fed, the experience is identical. Two windows on the back, one for the rangefinder, so you look through this to uh, focus, and then you look through this separate window here to frame your shot. Same with the Barnax. Two windows here. Same with the three, two windows. The three does have a nice um, adjustment here for uh, closer or more distant shots to um, to get the uh, range finder patch in focus so you get it nice and sharp with that the Leica 2 doesn't have it, doesn't seem to need it the Zorki doesn't have it, doesn't seem to need it um, so these are great little cameras they are cheap at the moment who knows when that may change but they are cheap at the moment, so if you want a Leica, 
but you don't want to pay like a prices, get one of these. These are pretty much the authentic experience. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it was of some use. Um, do contact me if you have any questions or if I've made any silly errors. Uh, do co do contact me to uh, correct me and don't forget to uh, like if you enjoyed and also subscribe if you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Cheerio.